Hello and welcome to the mill. This week I have a look at the Wingspan Indie Celebration Demo. So what this is, if you're unfamiliar, is um, Monster Couch put out on their Twitter and out on their Facebook page that um, for May 13th through 15th they were going to be a part of Digital Dragons Indie Celebration and in that time they were going to go ahead and make the wingspan demo available now this game is still in beta so and i've not played the demo yet so we're going to kind of go through this together um but anything that happens in this that's weird let's assume it's my laptop okay and let's not assume that it's anything wrong with uh, the wingspan game um, again it's a work in progress so we might see some weirdness but um, i've had a chance to play the alpha and it's gorgeous so I, you can still sign up to join the beta um, my understanding is you can do that right out at the at Steam. So I'm hoping this indie celebration demo stays out there. I don't know if it will, though. We'll just have to find out. Maybe we can petition Monster Couch if not. But um, we have a couple options here on this screen. We have Add Wingspan to your wish list, which why isn't it there already if you already have a Steam account? You can also join the Wingspan Discord, which is where they were actually running the alpha, and it actually says you can sign up for the beta there too. So I guess if I'd read a little bit before I present to you, it'd be a little bit better. Um, this one is actually specifically mentioned that it's a part of the Indie Celebration demo. Um, down here it says the demo contains the tutorial for the game, and this is still a work in progress, but they hope you enjoy it. Um, and then there's a button for feedback. Um, so let's get right into it. I'm going to play Wingspan. This is a familiar screen. Um, the online game is not available in the demo, nor are the, the I guess, the, the bird uh, library there. Um, we do have some settings, so let's go ahead and dip into these real quick. Um, the master volume, sound effects, music, all that stuff. Um, the resolution, <clears throat> Try this is a laptop, so let's not laugh at my resolution too much. Um, or do, I don't care. <laughs> I'm not, I don't have a gaming PC, so it is what it is, it's fine. Um, we got controller vibrations, I guess if you, it, it makes sense that they would um, have controller options in here given the fact that this is coming to Switch. Um, animation, full screen, um, reset online. I wonder if you have a, a losing record or something and, and you're getting better and you want to you want to dump those early losses to appear undefeated, um, if that's what that is. I don't know what that is, so I'm just guessing there. And then turn off V-Sync, which means something to you tech, uh, you really techy people. Um, it means nothing to me. Um, it's, a, it's a graphics option, I can tell you that. Um, so let's go ahead and let's just hop into the demo then. I'm going to hit play here. Um, there's a campaign. That's cool. I don't think there is a campaign in the, in the alpha. I could be wrong. Um, Automa. So you can play against uh, the Automa a custom game. So let's get right into the tutorial. You check it out. You watching my mouse? I was looking down at the tutorial. I don't know. That's probably just a coincidence. Yeah, he's just flying. He's going to look down. Yeah, okay. I thought maybe he was following my mouse there for a second. So, man, isn't this lovely? This is just something that... I love the, the, the graphics, or, or the graphics, I love the art style that they went with here. Um, you saw it in that zoom in. So it says, oh my, a visitor. Hello, I'm Robin, guardian of this nature preserve. If you're looking for birds, I have to disappoint you. They're all gone. Wow, this is dark already. <laughs> this is the darkest timeline. I want to rebuild their population, but it's not that easy. It's not that easy in the task. But it's not an easy task. I need to learn to read. That's not an easy task either. You look like you could help me. You'd think so. Apparently reading's not my strong suit. I apologize. Uh, sure you have some cards up your sleeve. Is that a chirping, a chipping sparrow? It is, actually. Um, and we can see, uh, let's go ahead and take a look at, you know, kind of like the, the bird card layout. So it's very familiar if you're familiar with the card game, um, which of course you are. Um, worth one victory point it's a bowl type nest you've got the wingspan right here the wind activated power and then we can see that it'll hold three uh three eggs on its card right here in in the, the habitats it you know can can go into as far as this and, and this is going to teach us all this so I, I guess i don't need to run through the the gist of the rules and we can see here in the bird feeder okay we got eight cubes remaining it's the first first round and here are the, the food we have available. So let's see here. She says, look at this bird's food cost. The worm slash grain symbol means that you have a choice of food types to spend to attract it. You'll either need a seed or an invertebrate. Sure, but we call it a worm. Linda, I don't remember what your name was. Um, but where's my food, you may ask? Look at the right side of the screen. That is your food panel over here. So that's what we have. 
um, and you have one grain, so that's apparently what I started with, and one grain, you should know that you won't be able to undo some actions. So when you see no undo, it means the action you're about to do cannot be undone. Play the chipping sparrow by clicking on it. All right. You click the arrow to confirm your food choice, I assume, because I only have that one. And it says to pay. Um, I can only do the grain here. So I'm going to go ahead and it says no undo. Let's go ahead and confirm it. Oh, you have the Carolina Wren as well, and no food to attract it. No worries, I'll help you. See that bird feeder here? Yes, I do. In order to gain food, click the slot next to your chipping sparrow. All right. Click to gain food. The symbol here means that you can take one food from the bird feeder. And if you want, you can exchange one card from your hand for one additional food. Of course, you don't want to do that now, as you'll want to attract the Carolina Wren. Well, of course, all the birds are gone. i got to bring them back. Let's gain food. You need a fruit or an invertebrate. Take the die with the, you know, invertebrate slash grain symbol. When you take a die showing this symbol, you can choose whether to take an invertebrate or a grain. So for now, take an invertebrate. So we can see here that these are the, down here, are the same dice that we see here in this picture. So let's take this. Let's choose the invertebrate, and let's go ahead and it appears this is an action we can undo if we wanted to. Um, oh, did you see that it turned last minute? We'll have to re report that. Uh, great, now it's your time for your sparrow to act. As you can see, every time that you gain food, the chipping sparrow will lay one egg. You spend an egg to play birds starting in the second column. At the end of the game, you score one point for each egg in your preserve. So when activated, powers are brown and the most common type. Every time you use one of the habitats to gain a resource, you can activate each brown power in that habitat. We are in the forest now, and I'll teach you more about different habitats later. Also, all of your bird powers are optional. That means you don't have to activate them if you don't want to. To skip, using a power this turn, just click you know, the right arrow button when you're, at, when you're asked to activate a bird. Thanks to the Chipping Sparrow's power, we can now lay one egg. To choose which bird to lay an egg on, simply click the bird. For now, there's only one bird you can lay an egg on, and that's the Chipping Sparrow. You just activate it. So yeah, let's do that. Let's click the bird. Put a little egg icon down there. We're going to confirm our choice, which cannot be undone. Now you have everything you need to attract your wren. This bird's power is green, which means it'll activate only once when you play it. Okay, so when played, it's going to be a green card. Before you do that, look at the card slots and see the egg symbol above them. It says how many eggs you need in order to attract a bird to this spot. For this bird, you need to spend one egg, which we have here on the Chipping Sparrow. Play your Carolina Wren. We're going to confirm the food choice, which cannot be undone. To spend an egg to play the bird, simply click on the bird whose egg you want to discard, which we can... Oh, sorry, Chipping Sparrow. We're taking yours. We're going to click right to confirm that we want to discard this egg and play this bird. The Carolina Wren's power is a wind-played power, so it activates now and only now. Draw two bird cards. Take the Blue Jay and the Black Vulture. If you insist... Click right to confirm your choice. Thanks to the Wren, you now have two more cards to play. Let's focus on the Blue Jay first. The colorful symbol in the food cost means that you can spend any food, spend food of any type to cover it. The plus means you need to spend one grain and one food of any type you choose. Yeah, which we see illustrated there. Notice that each time you play a bird in a habitat, the corresponding action becomes stronger. Here in the forest, that means the more birds you have, the more food you gain each time you activate this habitat. Each time you activate this habitat to gain food, you can now take two dice from the bird feeder. To attract the blue jay, you need one grain, so take that die. So let's take the grain. Notice now that all the die all the dice in the bird feeder show the same symbol. That means if you want to, you can reset the bird feeder and that is re-roll all five dice into the bird feeder and let's try that now. 
So all right, so that's the icon we're gonna get um, when all of the dice match. So hit that. Great. Remember, there's when there's only one dice left in the bird feeder, you can also re-roll all five. And when all the dice are taken out of the bird feeder, they'll be re-rolled at the end of the turn. Please take one invertebrate. Well, now activate the chipping sparrow's power and lay an egg on a bird of your choice. Is it going to choose for me? Nope. All right, I chose the Carolina Wren. And we'll choose that. Okay, you have everything you need to attract the blue jay. Remember the egg icon at the top of the slot next to the Carolina Wren means that you need to spend an egg to play a bird in that spot. So, we'll play the blue jay. Now, bird people, you tell me, is this the blue jay call? I'm really curious whether or not these calls are the bird's actual call. It sounds like it could be. If so, that's a that's a really cool feature. Okay, so you have everything you need to attract the blue jay. See, I went on off on a tangent. Just stick with me here. <laughs> okay, you have everything you need to attract the blue jay. Remember the egg icon at the top slot next to the Carolina Red means that you need to spend an egg to play a bird in that slot. So we'll choose... Uh, okay, oh, I gotta choose down here. I gotta confirm. Now I'm gonna choose the egg. Again, this cannot be undone. You can see from the egg icons that you need to spend two eggs to play the fourth bird in this habitat, which is shown right here. You're for, if you're familiar with Wingspan, you're familiar with this. Uh, remember that Chipping Sparrow's powers let you lay one egg each time you activate this habitat. That means you can activate your, your forest twice and have enough eggs to play another bird here. Because you see we have two more spots is what that's saying. Um, gain food and take one grain and one invertebrate. So we're gaining food. Take an invertebrate and a grain. And we're going to say OK. It's time to activate the Blue Jay's power. Here you can choose between caching food and taking it for yourself. Caching means that this bird is storing the food for itself, and once cached, you can't use it to attract birds, but each cached food is worth one victory point at the end of the game. Let's cache this food. Now, just my own little feedback here for what it's worth is, is maybe they should explain that these victory points are how we're going to win the game because we just said, hey, you're going to get one of these, and we don't really know what it's worth at this point if, um, you know, if we're unfamiliar with wingspans. So that might be just one little thing to note. Um, let's cache this food. You can't use it, but it's worth one victory point. Notice that you can only do so if grain is in the bird feeder. And it is. So we're going to cash. So we have an option to cash or take. So we're caching. <clears throat> now the Chipping Sparrow's power activates and you can lay one egg again. Choose which bird you want to lay an egg on. Let's go ahead and give it back to the... Well, we don't have any bonuses to make any considerations, right? And it's a tutorial. Let's just go ahead and give it back to the Chipping Sparrow. All right, gain one food one more time. And we're going to take this. Again, take one grain. I don't see exactly what it's telling me here. I can't. I cannot. Yeah, so, so it wants us to activate this habitat. So, okay. So we're going to do this. We're gaining food again. So we are going to take the grain. I took all the grain from the bird feeder. So you have to re-roll the dice if you want to take more food, of course. There's something important you need to know about food. When you have plenty of food, but not exactly the food you need, you can perform a small exchange. When playing a bird, you may spend any two food items as if they were one food of any kind. So two of any kind of food becomes one specific kind of food. Please take one invertebrate, and we will. And we will hit next. And then we'll gain one grain from the bird feeder, if available, and it is. And this time we're going to take it instead of caching it. And we're going to lay an egg. I guess I could have spread it around. Can I, can I take that back? I can't. Alright, remember to lay an egg. We did. Excellent. Did you notice that this is your last turn of the round? Oh, I did. Um, okay, so... 
During this game, there are four rounds in total. The first one has eight action cubes, so you can take eight turns that round. Each successive round, you have one fewer cube to spend. You can see how many cubes you have left to spend this round on the right side of the screen above the food panel. I'm not sure that means anything to a digital board game. You use one cube each turn when you play a bird or activate a habitat. Before you can play the black vulture, I want you to look at its power. It's pink, which means it's once between turns. It's a once between turns power. It can only be activated once between your turn by another player. Click on the other player's portrait to up at the top of the screen to see what he's been up to. Oh look, a barred owl. That symbol means that the bird has a predator power. It will hunt each time your opponent activates it. If the barred owl's hunt is successful, it will tuck the drawn card underneath it. Each tucked card is worth one victory point at the end of the game. Thanks to the Black Vulture's power, when your opponent's predator hunts, you can benefit too. Let's go back. Notice that the Black Vulture's food cost is nothing. This means there's no food cost to cover. You still need to spend two eggs to play it though. Attract the Black Vulture. Okay, so we're gonna gain food. We don't have to, we just need to play it. Okay, drag it up, yeah. Alright, so we did that. There's no food cost. We need to spend the eggs. Alright, so this is the end of round. So we didn't even know what our end of round, what we were playing for. That's alright. It's a tutorial. So we just finished the first round. You can see that the other player did much better than we did. Um... This is the goal board, and at the end of each round, you can earn extra victory points depending on what's in your preserve. You compete with other players for these points. The player who has the most of whatever this round's gold tile counts earns the most extra. You can check what each tile means now by clicking on the question button at the top left-hand corner. Count. All right, so you can hide the explanations again by clicking the question button again. But So we can see this one. Count the total number of eggs on birds with this specific nest type. Multiple eggs on one bird each count. Star nests count towards this goal. That's cool that they, this is a nice way to maybe ease your way, ease someone into the game, even though it's it's a pretty simple game for many people that are already familiar with games. It'd be nice to know how to gain more victory points, wouldn't it? It would be nice if we knew what those feathers were for. As you might have noticed, birds are worth points. A bird's point value is the number next to the feather on its card. Here we go. Each egg in your preserve at the end of the game is worth one victory point. Some birds have abilities that give you points at the end of the game, like your blue jay, which caches food, and the barred owl, which tucks cards. There are also other ways, for example, bonus cards, but I can but I can tell you about them in the next round if you want. Continue this tutorial in the next round? Of course. Let's see what this is all about. This round, I'll show you around the other two habitats. Anytime you want to look at one of the other habitats, just click on its icon on the left side of the screen. As you know, we're in the forest now. The other two habitats are grasslands and the wetland. Besides having slots for attracting birds, each habitat has its own unique action you can do. Firstly, you need more birds to attract. You can find more in the wetlands. Please meet me there. All right, nice little animation in transition. Hello again. Do you see the bird cards laying around here? Right now you can draw one. Do you want me to? All right. Anytime you draw a card, you can choose whether you want to draw one of the visible face-up cards or a face-down card from the deck. Now I need you to draw this cute little kill deer. You have one card now and lots of food. Before you attract your kill deer, look at the habitat symbols on the top left corner of the card. Oh, let me see that. We got grasslands and wetland. Since the kill deer has both of those symbols, you can choose to attract it to either of the two habitats. To attract the kill deer, you need a invertebrate or a grain. Remember that if you don't have this kind of food, you can exchange two to one. For the sake of learning, I'll ask you to attract the kill deer to the wetlands. All right. 
pay that cost. Look, your black power your black vulture's power just activated just now. The requirement was fulfilled by the other player. Your opponent's predator hunted successfully. If two of your opponent's predator birds successfully hunted this turn, the black vulture's power can only be activated once. That's why it's called a once between turns power. As with all bird powers, you can decide not to activate it. You can now choose one die from the burst bird feeder because the opponent's bird hunted successfully. So, is it going to tell me what to take? It's not, so we'll take, I guess, whatever. It's all the same at this point. Well, let's, maybe let's choose a food we don't have. Oh, it's not going to let me. That's fine. Killdeer's when activated ability says that if you spend one egg, you'll be able to draw two cards. To make use of this power, we'll lay eggs before we draw more cards. If you want to lay eggs, you have to go to the grasslands and click the first slot in this habitat. You could, of course, use your Chipping Sparrow's ability, but that would give you only one egg, and we need more. You can lay eggs even though you don't have any birds in the grasslands. Please go to the grasslands. Lay eggs on any birds you want. Each bird has a limit of how many eggs can be on it at once. A bird's egg capacity is indicated at the bottom of the card. Also, you can switch between habitats while laying eggs. So now we got to click birds that we want to lay eggs on. Let's we'll go back to the forest just because we can. And we'll, we'll see. Well, we don't know what our bonuses are. Who cares? We'll lay one here. It says change egg color. So that's something that I'm sure they'll be implementing to use the, the different colors we have in the box. You should now draw more cards to have more birds to attract. Please draw the face up cards first. Alright, so we're going to click here. Um, let's see, and I guess if we can afford it, it doesn't care. I'm not sure it's going to give us any direction, so we might as well take four big points for the demo. Why not? As you can see, you can spend an egg to draw an additional additional cards let's do that now all right so we'll take it off of here that's what I get for putting it in a different habitat isn't it all right so which one draw face up cards we'll go ahead and take uh, well, we're not even dealing with bonus cards so I guess I'll just take this now you can decide whether to activate the Killdeer's ability, spend an egg to draw two, draw the last face-up card. Alright, so we'll do that. And we'll take the Condor. As you can see, you can run out of face-up cards. The face-up cards will be replenished only when you finish your turn. But don't worry, you can still draw face-down cards from the deck. Please do that now. You have so many cards now. Your Barn Swallow has a flocking power. You can tuck a card behind it and draw a new one each time you activate it. It creates a flock that way. Remember, each tucked card needs one victory card, one victory point more at the end of the game. And you've drawn two Predators, like the Barn Owl we saw in the first round. The Cooper's Hawk draws a card and tucks it. If it succeeds, the Snowy Egret hunts in a different way, instead using the dice outside of the Bird Feeder. Now look at your California Condors, Condors when played power. Playing it will give you a bonus card. You can choose which habitat you want to attract it to because it has all the habitat symbols on the card. But you don't have any eggs to cover the additional costs on that other habitat, so you can play it in the grasslands now. Attract the California Condor to the grasslands. There we go. You now draw two bonus cards, but you can only keep one. You gain more victory points at the end of the game if you fulfill the requirements specified on the bonus card that you choose. There's no punishment if you don't manage to meet any of the bonus card's requirements. The Forester bonus card is really good for you as you already have four birds that can only be played in the forest. As for the Wildlife Gardener, look at the California Condor you've just played. It has the 
eggs. Uh, it has that icon. I forget what this one is. Um, I think it's on the ground. It has this icon under his one victory point. It's the bird's nest type. To get a better view of your cards while choosing your bonus cards, you can hide this interface by clicking the arrows down here. You can also switch between your habitats to check which birds meet the requirements of those bonus cards. Please go to the forest and come back to the grasslands. Now we can see this. Now choose one of the bonus cards. Well, let's go with the forester. Remember when I told you to lay eggs if you want to attract more birds to your habitats? You should lay more. Because you played the California Condor in your grassland, your lay eggs action has improved. You can now discard one food of any kind to lay an additional egg, and you can do that now. Well, let's get rid of grain. And we'll lay another egg. Great, now do what you want to finish the second round. Gain food, lay eggs, draw bonus cards to attract more birds. I would advise the latter since you have some cards in your hand. So we want to attract more birds. All right, let's see here. If we do if we do this one, let's see what kind of food we can get. All right, we can get this to feed our hawk and then that will also help us with our bonus. So let's do that. Let's gain food. And that'll still help us. So let's do, let's do it. Why not? And yeah, we got lots of food. We'll take another one of these. All right, gain one grain from the feeder it is do we take it or cash it we got plenty let's go ahead and cash it and we are going to click on a bird to lay an egg so we'll just give it back to the chipping sparrow Ooh, we led that one bird in the forest for sure in the second round is done there are some things i want to tell you before we part ways we are reaching the end of the demo Look at the face-up cards here in the wetlands. After each round, they will be replaced with new ones. Remember that if you want a specific card and the round is coming to an end, if you don't act fast, you will lose the opportunity to draw it. If you don't remember your current end-of-round goals or would like to check on your progress on it, check your progress on it, click on the end-of-round goal tiles at the top right-hand corner for more information. You can also check your current victory point summary there too. Also remember the question button. You can click it at any time, which brings up helpful information. And clicking it again hides the tips. I think this is all I have to tell you for now. I hope you will successfully attract many birds to your habitats. You can now finish the remaining two rounds of the game if you want. Good luck playing Wingspan. All right, so it is going to let us play through that demo. So let's let's go ahead and finish what we started, shall we? I'm just gonna, I'm gonna try not to think about it too much. I'm just gonna try and we need eggs in the grasslands for this bonus. Um, not that that should necessarily be the end all be all, but let's go ahead and play our our barn swallow. We'll do that. Uh, we'll spend the egg right here since we're here. Oh wait, no, we don't want to do that. Oh, there's no one do. Come on. <laughs> oh man. All Barn right. Swallow. Barn swallows once nested in caves, but now favor human-made structures. Okay. Interesting. So we're going to click to start a turn. I'm curious what happened there. I, I haven't encountered this before where it went ahead and talked. Um, let's go ahead and click to lay eggs because we need... 
let's, let's see how we're doing here points wise if it'll show us that tracker so he's got four eggs in this habitat yikes okay so we don't need food I guess I gotta click that again or not oh okay so let's go ahead and get some eggs tuck a card from my hand. Do I want to do that? No, I don't want to do that. And click to start my turn. Alright, so... Alright, so I've laid some eggs. I don't want to... I mean, I could. Uh, let's get... For the forester, let's go ahead and... How many eggs do we have elsewhere? We have two here. We have two there. We have one there. You know what? Let's go ahead and do some more eggs. We'll fill this up and then we can spend the eggs to get this Cooper's Hawk out for our Forester. Let's do this one more time. So that's full. Let's get. Alright. And we're not going to tuck. So our opponent just took another turn. They laid eggs. So let's go ahead and we want to attract the hawk here. We're gonna pay the food. Let's go ahead and take some eggs. And this is good for our bonus card. Did that. And let's go ahead and activate this row. Why not? And let's go ahead and reroll. Oof. All right, look at a card from the deck. Come on, less than 75 centimeter wingspan. Yes, goodbye, red-eyed Vireo. So sorry. So we can see that that is that symbol obviously means uh, talked. In this, obviously means the grain is cached. So these two different icons, we get to see that. Um, let's go ahead and. and cash another food. We're not hurting for it. And we'll lay... Let's see, the next one is just total birds. So, we'll go ahead and do that. We'll put it there. Alright. Okay. So, let's go ahead and... We're playing for total birds, so let's go ahead and get this snowy egret out. And... Let's see here, pay the food. We'll take one of these eggs. Yeah. Snowy egret. In the 1880s, these birds' wispy plumes were literally worth their weight in gold. I like the the little fact, you know, that you usually see on the card having that red. That's cool. So we tied for eggs. And we're well ahead on birds. I'm feeling pretty comfortable with that. Um, they've laid eggs. It's the last round. I think that's to be expected. <laughs> right? Um, do we want to get some more birds out? Do we have the food for it? Yeah, we do. Alright, so let's let's go ahead and we'll take the this one and this one. Why not? Let's roll some dice. Hey, alright, we're gonna get a cached one there for the snowy egret. And do we want to discard? Nah, I'm not gonna bother, I'm not gonna bother with that. More choices for me to mull over on camera? No thank you. 
So they're laying eggs again. <laughs> it is kind of like playing with someone else, isn't it? Um, <laughs> let's go ahead and go up here to the grasslands, right? Because we're, I mean, our last couple terms, we got to spam eggs too, right? Just, uh, just to irritate people. Let's go ahead and get our, our big pointer out and we'll pay these. We'll pay that egg. Dark eyed Junko. Junko's summer in the cool woods, but we'll use more open habitats in the winter. Cool, cool. They laid eggs again. <laughs> oh, I, it, it, I guess I'm amused by the fact that even the computer is like, hey, the last round, we just have to spam eggs. Interesting. <laughs> Uh, okay, so we got three more. Well, okay, so this is well worth it. Let's go ahead and do this. So, we'll pay the food, pay our two eggs. Eastern Kingbird. The Kingbird displays its orange crown while defending its territory. You laid eggs again. <laughs> well, he's not going to beat us on birds, that's for sure, since he's choosing to spend his last turns. Okay, so I didn't necessarily mean to put two there. Are you the only... Let's tuck a card uh, from... You tuck a card from hand? We don't have any. Um, oh, again, don't have any. It, so am I the only person that when I'm laying eggs is like, I look at these birds and I'm like, okay, he laid eggs again. Of course he did. Um, and, and try and make sure that all of your birds at least have one egg, you know, so that they can you know, carry on. Um, I'm gonna... I'm gonna be able to do it this time. Oh, yes. Okay, certainly. Nice. I can't have you to talk. Alright, so... Yep. Beat him pretty handily there. Um, so we'll go next, and now we're gonna see how the scoring works. More bird victory points, end around goals. Nice, okay. Eggs. I had more eggs. Food on cards, tuck cards, yeah. So 59 to 39, and I am the winner. Let's go ahead and look at some of these. Detail. Alright, so that just breaks down how you got those points. And that's what you can right here, tuck cards. We got a little little uh, chart here that shows what is what, a little key. The overview, I guess that just lets us go back through and, and kind of see how it all how it all went down. See the total score. Okay, so we can see their card. They have a ton of cards in hand. So not a lot played. I like the, the transition animation, like going from one habitat to the next. That's very cool. Just a really pretty presentation here, I think. Um, I like that it uses a lot of the same guy, uh, game iconography. I do wish that it explained sooner that that these these feathers are actually the victory points, and and so you, you know these are the different ways you gain victory points because I do think it just kind of I think it is leaning towards the people that are already familiar with Wingspan to know hey these are the feathers are what we're going for that's what we want so. Um, so yeah, so let's go ahead and we saw the detail, the overview, the menu. And there we have it, the indie celebration demo of Wingspan. Man, I cannot wait until this game is available. Um, even in, in beta, like, I just had enjoyed myself with the alpha so much. Um, and, and, and even here in this beta, like, there, there's stuff different. Like, the, the reading of those little facts, I really like that little voiceover. Um, I, I could see how maybe it gets repetitive over time, but I think what might be kind of cool is the fact that me, Mr. Non-Birder, um, you know, I'm going to be the guy that has, like, one fact about every bird, and, like, oh, this Carolina Wren, guess what? Blah, 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 you know, and, and, like, whatever it is, it's like I got that one fact in my hat for <laughs> for, for discussion, I guess. Um, so that's kind of funny, but... Um, yeah, I hope this stays available for a little bit. Um, I'm going to go ahead and click this Give Us Feedback link and uh, mention, just maybe emphasize what those victory points are a little sooner. Um, but otherwise, that was Wingspan, the, the Indie Celebration demo. You can 
you know, kind of get the tutorial and play through the last couple rounds. Um, I really dig it. I really dig it. I am very excited for this game. I think Monster Couch has done a fantastic job. And when you think about Wingspan and all the stuff that's won lately, um, all the all the people that have, have come to this game, I have to imagine that Monster Couch felt that pressure and had that on their shoulders. And, and, and man, you know, you have to know that the, the eyes are going to be on this, you know, just due to the, the board game. And they've knocked it out of the park for me so far. I just... It's it's such a lovely product, and it's only going to get better looking, um, or, or you know, a more complete package with the online and the campaign. I'm really excited to see what that's all about. Uh, again, I don't even know what that campaign could look like. So I'm, I'm really am geeked that there, there's there's still surprises to be had. Um, and man, Monster Couch is just doing a fantastic job. Elizabeth and Jamie have just got to be thrilled with what they're seeing here. Um, but yeah. Thank you so much for, for humoring me through this demo. I hope you enjoyed it. Um, I hope you get a chance to play it. If, if not, I hope you get into the beta if that's your kind of thing. And if not, I um, hope the, the retail game, uh, digital, if you are a digital gamer, that this excited you. All right, let's go ahead and get to the business of last week's episode of The Mill. I mentioned that I had a couple of keys for side digital edition to give away and that is what i'm going to do now um, what i did was i went ahead and everybody who expressed interest in getting a copy or getting a, a, the key i went ahead and just tossed those names into notepad plus plus so there was a line number next to each name and then i just ran uh the number total number of entries through random.org and got two different numbers so if you don't like the results Thank the computer, and if you do like the results, ah, I, I still can't take credit. You got to thank the computer. I had nothing to do with it. So, um, without further ado, the two winners are Lauren Winsby and Matthew McHugh. You two have won a couple of keys for, or you each won a single key for Side Digital Edition on Steam. Um, go ahead and shoot me an email at sm like Stonemeyer sm dot millshow at gmail dot com. Again, that's sm.millshow at gmail.com. Um, I'm going to give you guys until May 30th to claim those keys. I figure a couple weeks um, is, is pretty fair. So um, that's all I have. Congratulations to you two. And, and that's all I have for you this week. Um, again, I just, just take care of each other. Uh, take care of yourselves. And um, stay safe. All right. Thanks again for watching.